the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God who is our Father, and the friendship of his Spirit be with you all. Gather together as God's holy people, his holy priesthood. We call to mind any sins we've committed so that we might more worthily enter into the mystery of his love. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the truth whom, which sets us free. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from, you, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devise, devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, 
who prayed and laid hands on him. The word of God continued to speak, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God, and like living stones. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you would also know my Father. From now on, you do not know him, and have, you have known him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still not know, do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will go do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, we gather on this Christian Sabbath to celebrate the Mass through the means of television and the internet. I imagine that we will continue these televised masses for some time in the future. Many dioceses, including our own, are formulating plans for when we will back, be back in our churches and how that will be accomplished in a safe and in a responsible fashion, out of charity for ourselves and for others. Until then, we wait with patient endurance. I recall that word from seminary times. It is hopamani, something like that. It means being patient, enduring even in the time of suffering. And we look forward to that day when you and I can receive together the sacraments. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and in the United States it's also Mother's Day, and in the Universal Church, we traditionally honor the Blessed Virgin Mary during the month of May. Mary is the mother of Jesus. She is our spiritual mother and the mother of the church. So a few words on each. First, on the scripture reading. During the Easter season, you and I are blessed to read from the Acts of the Apostles. Sometimes this book written by St. Luke the Evangelist is sometimes called the Fifth Gospel or the Gospel of the Holy Spirit. Today's passage is drawn from chapter six, verses one through six, and it concerns the establishment of deacons by the primitive church as it continued to grow. Today we're much more familiar with deacons than I was when I was growing up. The order was reestablished by the late Saint Pope Paul VI, following the directives of the Second Vatican Council. 
Today we know this order of clergy as the permanent diaconate. We roughly have around 100 deacons, permanent deacons, currently serving or in formation for the Diocese of Scranton. It's a ministry of service, primarily. Deacons were established in the first century to meet the growing needs of that church and the difficulties that it was facing. It tells us that the church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, chose these seven individuals to assist the apostles in their ministry. First of all, it was to wait on table. In other words, to be of service. But quickly, as we continue reading, we find out that their ministry was expanded to actually preach the gospel, and in some cases, as in terms of Stephen, to also give their life for the faith. There is a good takeaway, I think, from this passage. And uh, it tells us the church adapts. It's a living organism. It adapts to the needs of the times. Certainly, it doesn't just do it by itself. They call upon the Holy Spirit to guide and to direct her, and always keeping in mind the sacred tradition as well as the teaching of Jesus. In a much smaller way, and for a very temporary period of time, you and I are going to be expected to adapt to changes that will be required so that worship of God and the ministry of the church may continue in a safe and responsible manner. May we be mature enough, open enough to these minor changes, these temporary changes, for the good of the entire church, and not to give in to criticism or complaints, negative thoughts, and opinions. God guides his church. He guides it through the Holy Spirit, and he challenges us to follow. This weekend, we also celebrate Mother's Day, special holiday here in the United States and at various times throughout the world. It's a time-honored tradition. Actually, was born on May the 10th, of 1908, so this year, today, is exactly 112 years. And it's a time for us to remember all those who have a mothering influence on each one of us. And that could be in many ways. Obviously, our physical mothers, but adoptive mothers, stepmothers, single mothers, godmothers, spiritual mothers or religious, as well sometimes as a father who sometimes provides for both. We thank them for living out their vocation, their self-sacrificing, and helping us throughout our life to grow and to mature as a responsible adult. The Mass that I'm celebrating today for you is for the intention of all of our mothers, living and deceased. But we're called to honor them, not only on this particular day, but every day. And we do it by simple acts of kindness, of thoughtfulness, and of respect. Finally, the month of May has traditionally been a time to honor a very special mother, we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus, our spiritual mother, and also the mother of the church. Mary is indeed the greatest of all Christians. She was the most faithful of all disciples because she actually surrendered her life to the will of God. And she not only surrendered it, but she trusted that he would give her the strength to accomplish that will. Mary said yes. She always said yes to God, not only when things were going easy in her life, but most importantly, when they were difficult, when they were challenging, when they were confusing and sometimes painful. 
that simple fiat, that yes to God's will, I believe is a wonderful example for each one of us. One of my favorite passages uh, in the Bible, very brief passage, it's from, I believe, the second uh, chapter of John's Gospel. It's the wedding feast at Cana. And at one point, Mary instructs the servant who is there with these simple words, do whatever he tells you. That's it in a nutshell. May we follow that directive in our own life to do whatever he tells you. This passage from the gospel that we've heard today is the farewell mes message of Jesus to his apostles before his impending death on the cross. And he reminds them, and he reminds us through his word, not to fear, but to have trust, as did Mary, his mother. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. And he goes on to tell us, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. Many of you may know that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, requested the bishops throughout the world to consecrate their diocese and indeed their country to Mary under the title Mother of the Church, given to us as Jesus hung upon the cross to ask for her powerful intercession for an end to this affliction that the world is going through. In our diocese, this was accomplished by Bishop Bambera at three o'clock on last, on Friday, May the 1st. We're being challenged to trust that God will hear our pleas through Mary. After communion today, one of our high school students representing all of us here going to place a fresh floral bouquet, a crown on Mary's image. And although that is traditional and beautiful, the greatest way that you and I can truly honor Mary is by imitating her faithfulness, her faithfulness to Jesus, by surrendering our own life so that we might accomplish his will. Oscar Wilde, an Irish poet, a playwright, once said these words that we're all familiar with, at least the first part of his quotation. He said, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. May we strive to imitate Mary in her devotion, her faithfulness in her discipleship. May you and your family have a blessed Sabbath. May you enjoy fellowship with your mother here on earth, whether it's through a phone call, a text, an email, or a Zoom chat, a visit, or a meal, or perhaps like me, a visit to, her, to the cemetery. God bless you, and have a blessed day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come, amen. In a spirit of confident faith, we now address our Heavenly Father with our needs. For Bishop Bambera and all those who are preparing guidelines for the reopening of our churches, that they might be filled with wisdom as we prepare for the gradual and safe reopening, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our president, the governors, members of Congress, and local officials will work together in the next phase of this pandemic in their efforts to keep our citizens safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all mothers, godmothers, grandmothers, single and adoptive mothers, and spiritual mothers on this special day might be filled with God's peace and happiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during the month of May, as we honor our spiritual mother, Mary, that we might seek to imitate her in following Jesus and his will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially the parishioners of St. John Bosco Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, and all our deceased mothers and those listed on our Mother's Day remembrances, that they may live in God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of those who have contacted, contracted the coronavirus will be healed of their illness, and that the families of those we have lost will be strengthened in their grief by the Easter faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the personal intentions we hold in our hearts and which we now recall in silence, we pray to the Lord. We place these petitions before our Heavenly Father through the powerful intercession of Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. and that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, 
to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your praise as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all bishops, clergy, and religious. Remember all the deceased parishioners of St. John Bosco Parish and all those listed on our Mother's Day remembrances and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the holy apostles, with all the saints and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. We share that peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Gracious Father, with love and devotion, we honor Mary, the mother of God, the mother of the church, and our spiritual mother. We ask you now to send your choicest blessings upon this floral crown. As we gaze upon it with faith, may we recognize Mary as the queen of heaven and earth and strive to imitate her goodness. May we walk in her likeness and strive to be connected with Jesus as she was in prayer. May Mary continue to intercede for us to her son Jesus now and forever. We ask this to, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord is with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, to know, to love, and to serve the Lord and one another. <laughs>